Right. Well, th thank you. Uh, it's uh, lovely to to be here. Um, so, just uh, something briefly about me. I'm I'm Richard uh, Williams, as you can see. I'm a, I'm a professor of uh, contemporary visual cultures at the University of Edinburgh, where I've been teaching uh, for a long time since uh, 2000. Uh, and I'm based in the uh, the School of Art History, so so I'm really an art historian, um, although I, I deal with a very wide range of uh, stuff. And the, um, the the research that I've done mainly, the teaching that I do, uh, tends to be about architecture. It tends to be about the the reception of architecture, architectural modernism, uh, in particular. And uh, the the topic of the the talk today, um, this book, Sex and Buildings. Uh, is a book which I um, I published in 2013. Um, I'm the author of, I think, <laughs> I've lost count, maybe it's seven, eight books now, um, including the, the upcoming book on the, the critic uh, Rainer Bannum, uh, which will be out in May. So what, what I'm going to do here uh, is talk a little bit about this book, uh, Sex and Buildings, which, uh, as I say, is a, is a book from a little while ago. And it, and it came out of, a, I think, a particular moment in, in time. Uh, it was a moment when I think I was thinking about the topic. You know, I mean, we're, we're all in, who isn't interested in sex, right? But uh, I, I was certainly thinking uh, about the topic in, in various ways and, and trying to think about how you would relate uh, that very human topic to, to architecture. And I had a very simple question, a kind of dumb question, which, which was, you know, where was, uh, where was sex? Where was sexuality in uh, the, the conversation around modern architecture? So it's really a, a very simple premise. You know, how, how do you talk about sex in relation to architecture? You know, where was that conversation? Um, I, I was very curious to, to find out. So it, it's a book that, that goes on a, a slightly wild uh, tour through, um, through various uh, forms of uh, theory and architecture. I mean, sadly, nothing, uh, if you've read the conclusion to it, uh, nothing happens to me at all rem remotely interesting, um, but it, it's uh, an interesting tour anyway. And th this is the uh, contents page, just to uh, give you a, a clue of what, what, what's in there and partly to remind me what I, what I actually wrote. So the, uh, the beginning of it um, dealt with uh, a uh, kind of discourse around sex where it was very much related to health and there, there was a whole lot of stuff there uh, about the architecture of Richard Neutra, who, who many of you will, will know about. Um, the, the second chapter, uh, which I, I'll illustrate uh, shortly with a, an interesting picture, but uh, it, it was about um, Wilhelm Reich's theories of uh, orgone energy and, and um, uh, well, I mean, that, that really was uh, very interesting to, to explore. Um, there was a chapter about communes and communal living uh, where I, I went uh, or tried to revisit uh, one of the, the most fascinating communes of late 60s America, which was uh, Drop City in Colorado. Uh, um, there was a, a chapter on uh, skyscrapers and phallic architecture in general. Um, porno modernism is the, the, the thing which I'll, um, it's a term which I, I came up with, which I'll, I'll say a little bit more uh, about later. Uh, there was a chapter on hotels. Um, there was a chapter on, on uh, how you would envisage a feminist city. And in fact, there, there's a, a very interesting um, a uh, new book on that topic uh, out, which uh, has, has revisited a lot of the things which uh, I, I was interested in there. Uh, and queer spaces as well was a, 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 a major concern. Um, so um, some of the key um, images uh, in, in the book, I was really um, preoccupied with, with images here and representations of buildings. Uh, as much as um, buildings themselves. But some, some of the key images, uh, key buildings were uh, included this. Um, this was Ru Rudolf Schindler's King's Road House in uh, Hollywood, built in 1922, uh, very much discussed in, in histories of American uh, modernism. Uh, and it interested me partly because Schindler was such a uh, sort of raffish uh, character um, but, but partly because of the design of the house, uh, it was a house built for two young uh, couples and uh, it, it had these unusual um, sleeping arrangements with, with two 
kind of exterior sleeping canopies and the, the, the idea was that it would be almost like like camping and and in the the subtext to this house um, there, there seemed to be uh, a kind of primitive idea of, of um, sexual liberation there that these these two couples would be really quite intimate with each other um, so I explored that a little bit that was an important image there, there is um, Schindler uh, himself on, on the right hand side this rather sort of piratical um, figure um, standing there, Re really interesting uh, character. Um, I was very interested uh, in um, the uh, the case study houses um, built, uh, many of them in, in California, and they, this was uh, a, a series of houses that were commissioned, uh, not all of them built, but commissioned as ideas from, from 1945 uh, by the, the visionary editor of Arts and Architecture, the, the American Architecture Journal. Uh, and a number of these uh, seem to be very interesting to, to me in this um, context of thinking about sexuality and, and architecture. Uh, not, not because of the, their intentions, because I think, I think many of these uh, houses were, were built as straightforward um, explorations of new technology. How could you build uh, cheaply, quickly, uh, using materials that were readily available. How, how would you house the, the, the families that were going to be produced just after the Second World War? Very, very practical questions. But there was something in the way that these buildings were imaged, uh, particularly in, in the work of photographers like Julius Shulman, which seemed to raise questions of, about their sexual life their potential sexual life. So there, this was one image which I, I said something about, and it'd be total speculation, <laughs> but a, a picture by Julius Shulman of, of um, case study house number 21, the, the Bailey house, where, where there seemed to be in Shulman's picture some kind of sexual tension um, there in, in this image. And it was a very striking that the, the, the notoriously sex obsessed um, publisher Taschen, uh, when they published a book about this house, that, that this was the image they put on the cover. There's some, some kind of, there's something going on in this, the, this image, which was uh, certainly um, open uh, to, to the idea of a, of a sexual or, or um, a libidinal uh, interpretation. So, so I made some speculations about that, which you know you're welcome to, <laughs> to shoot down. But it seemed that there was something going on in these images by Shulman. I mean, even in something like this, um, uh, case study house 22, also by uh, Koenig, um, the, the architect. Uh, and it was, uh, uh, I suppose, what was interesting for me about Shulman's images was that he he populated his houses. He, he populated them with, with young, attractive people. Sometimes, as you saw in the previous image, there was some sort of sexual tension that seemed to be there. Um, but that there was certainly a, a sense that these buildings were uh, inhabited. And if you, you know about the history of architectural photography, the way that, that um, buildings have been represented in the architectural journals, that then very often they're depopulated. Uh, uh, architectural photographers often hate the, the buildings to, to be populated by anybody. They want them to be empty, like, like sculptures. So, so those images were, were interesting. Um, and then, well, actually much later on, this is a picture which didn't appear in the book, but I, I, um, I, I did start to, uh, uh, for another project, uh, did, did start to look at, at, at how um, this particular case study house had, had been photographed later on. Uh, and you end up with, uh, you know, an extraordinary range of, of advertising and um, uh, TV productions and you know, strange things like this. Um, Stephen Meisel's extraordinary fashion shoot for Valentino from 2001. Uh, one of a whole series of pictures of just abject debauchery going on in this house. And I was very pleased to see this because it seemed to uh, confirm uh, my um, thesis, as it were, that, that, that there were that there was a kind of um, erotic uh, undercurrent to, to these houses, that the way that they were talked about um, uh, and gossiped about, perhaps. Um, uh, quite often, uh, I ended up having to look at uh, things uh, on the edge of architecture, so re representations uh, that were not necessarily produced by architects. So, so th this was a quite an important image in, in the chapter on, on skyscrapers. 
um, Madelon Friesendorp, uh, an image uh, called uh, Flagrant Delit from 76, and it, and it depicts um, the, the cries of the building and the Empire State uh, in bed together, ha having clearly just had sex, and there's this deflated uh, airship or, or blimp, the Goodyear blimp, uh, as, a, as a sort of um, surrogate condom there on the, on the bed. I mean, a ridiculous image, but, but a kind of um, an interesting one. Uh, as well. So quite often we, we were looking at, at representations of things as much as the, the things themselves. And, and th this was important too. Uh, Mad Men, uh, now receding into memory, but th this uh, important TV series from uh, 2007 onwards. Uh, and it, the set design for this uh, was um, if you remember it, re remarkable in, in its attention to detail. It's a brilliant modernist interiors, um, uh, very uh, elusive to, to mainstream modernist uh, office design. And it did, did those things really well. And then it populated them with these extraordinary characters uh, where there was uh, any amount of sexual tension, sort of sexual transgressions, uh, sometimes very disturbing um, transgressions. There, there's a, um, a, a rape scene early on uh, you know, it, it could be, you know, really uh, unsettling and, and disturbing. And the sexual politics of the office is played out in a brilliant way in, in this um, series. Uh, and there's an episode from, from uh, early on, uh, episode uh, eight, the first season with it, these two uh, in, a, in a sexual clinch um, uh, early one morning. Um, so representations are important. I, I said I'd show you a, a picture of the, the organ accumulator, and, and there, there's me, uh, much younger and um, thinner, <laughs> enjoying uh, the, um, uh, the cosmic energy of the organ box uh, in, at the Reich Museum. Uh, and this seemed to me, uh, it's one of the points where there, there's a, a, a concern for um, architecture and some kind of energy, wh whether it's sexual energy or, or not, I, I don't know. And I have to say the box did absolutely nothing for me. <laughs> anyway, uh, on to, to this um, idea. Uh, I think uh, this in, in some ways um, was one of the, uh, the, the, the richest parts of the, the book, this, this concept, pornotopia. Uh, or sorry, porno modernism is really my term. Actually, I should say por pornotopia is, a, <laughs> is my, my mistake here. It's a, it's a book by um, Beatriz Colomina, uh, sorry, Beatriz um, Preciado, uh, one of um, Colomina's students, uh, an extraordinary book, uh, which also looked at the, um, at the, uh, the Playboy house. Um, uh, as I did, we, we were sort of looking at it at much the same time. So my, my term was uh, porno modernism, which I, I I haven't used a great deal since then. But I, there, there was a number of things um, in it which I think are worth exploring. So this was one place in uh, the the discourse around modern buildings where where there seemed to be some sort of explicit connection um, between sex and, and architecture. And uh, it, it's curious, it, it, you know, it should be Playboy. It was quite sort of uncomfortable uh, discovering that in, in a way because of, you know, Hefner's a, a strange and difficult and not, not altogether pleasant um, character. And the organization uh, turned out to be you know, incredibly secretive and uncooperative, d difficult to deal with. So in fact, I, I couldn't reproduce any of these images in, in, in the book. Um, but, I, but I looked at the Playboy townhouse, this was an uh, unbuilt um, project uh, from 1962. Uh, um, Playboy uh, had uh, some ideas about what would constitute good uh, building. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, a, it's a four storey house built or proposed for the, the, the Gold Coast in, in Chicago. Um, it's got five bathrooms, no, no less than five bathrooms. It's really, really just built for one man. <laughs> um, it's got a pool with, with glass walls and there, there's, a, there's a voyeuristic and exhibitionistic character to, to the whole house. You, you can, uh, as you'll see in that, that, that image there, it's a house built around the pool and you can see the pool from, from all directions. Uh, and uh, it has uh, this, this is the, the, the first um, image of, of the notorious bed, uh, which was um, uh, clearly, you know, built as as you know. This is a a kind of um, 
uh, you know, prototype um, bed, uh, which was, uh, as it, it, it turned out to be in real life, um, circular, motorised, um, uh, um, sorted out with, with all the latest uh, communication. So you, basically you could spend uh, your entire uh, life um, uh, from the bed. Uh, the bed, as I say here, was the um, designed as the um, the centre of operations. And all of these things were um, supposed to be um, uh, built uh, in, in this uh, Playboy Club, which in the end wasn't built, but some of those elements did uh, turn up in, in the um, Playboy mansions. And, and there, is the, um, there is the bed uh, from the uh, Chicago Club from 1966. And, and uh, Hefner, as you know, um, spent uh, spent his life there. <laughs> it was a you know a workspace and, and a, a space of uh, all kinds of entertainment. Um, and I've actually quoted uh, Preciado there, uh, but Preciado is now not called uh, Beatriz but called Paul. Um, so um, she's transitioned to to Paul in in the time that I I've been following her writing. And in and in fact uh, he. Uh, says um, here, he makes a very nice comparison between the Playboy bed and the, the bizarre situation that we've all found ourselves in in, in the last 12 months uh, with the, the coronavirus uh, pandemic. Um, we've all ended up in a situation rather like this where, where um, life and, and work have, have all um, co congealed in, in the same place. Anyway, uh, uh, enough of that. But uh, Preciado is a, is a really important uh, writer here. Um, so, in, in terms of my, my term, porno modernism, uh, having set it up in the uh, in relation to the uh, Playboy's ideas about um, architecture, then I, I went on to look at a couple of buildings uh, by John Lautner, and the Lautner, who was a native of, of Michigan, um, ended up in in. Um, in Los Angeles, where he, he was an architect who, who for various reasons, which I, I don't entirely understand, seemed to have fallen out with most architectural journalists. But but one place that his work was routinely published was Playboy, and there's there's a few articles um, describing his buildings. And although he he was, I, I think, completely embarrassed by, or if not embarrassed. I think infuriated by the fact that uh, his only coverage was was there. Uh, it, it, nevertheless, uh, what Playboy says about these buildings is quite interesting, and it finds in in Lautner's um, houses uh, some of the qualities that that it uh, was promoting in um, uh, in in that idea of the the townhouse. So it, it found uh, buildings that, although they were designed for family life. By the architect, it found buildings that were seemed to be hedonistic. They were organised around the, the display of the, the body. Uh, the pool was always very important. There were often um, places where you could uh, watch people and observe. So there were voyeuristic qualities about them, uh, and and those qualities uh, seem to be recognised in in all sorts of cultural forms. So there's the, the extraordinary Elrod House in Palm Springs. Which I, I visited on an ex unbelievably hot day in, in um, about 2011, uh, and it has this uh, sort of circular plan with with a, a gigantic uh, concrete ceiling, um, and it has, like all Lautner's houses, it, it really pays a lot of attention to the bedroom, uh, and that that is the the, the main bedroom uh, in the um, uh, in the house. Um, uh, and Playboy covered this when, when it was uh, when it had just been built, and it, and it said all sorts of things that, that were designed to appeal to, to Playboy readers. And clearly, it set up the house uh, as a place for for sexual adventures, as it were. And that idea uh, got um, very uh, mainstream coverage uh, in this film, uh, where there's this um, slightly weird. Um, rather sadomasochistic scene uh, where James Bond uh, gets uh, gets beaten up by these two uh, two women uh, in the film Diamonds Are Forever from 1971. And there's a, quite a, a protracted uh, scene, a rather unpleasant scene actually in, in, um, in that film. Um, then there's this house, uh, not long ago, uh, donated to uh, LACMA, the Los Angeles County Museum, of art uh, by um, uh, by uh, Goldstein, who's the um, uh, 
the current uh, or was the, the current uh, owner of the house. Uh, rather um, extraordinary character and it's a house built in 1963 again covered by Playboy uh, again built with, with um, the, the most uh, straightforward family oriented uh, concerns uh, it's a big uh, concrete triangle um, built around uh, a pool uh, it has all sorts of places in the house where you, you can uh, watch people um, unobserved um, and it has had uh, quite an existence uh, in uh, in film, there have been various um, porn films that have been made there. There's a, a, an artistic uh, installation by a, an Austrian artist called uh, Dorit uh, Margreiter, uh, which was set there for the same reasons. Uh, and it shows up uh, in uh, in uh, the big uh, Lebowski, uh, as you remember, it's this uh, film uh, by the Coen brothers from 1998. But just, just to go back to a couple of those images, th this uh, is, is one of the, the key places in the house that is, you know, th th there is something uh, very explicitly voyeuristic going on. So from the master bedroom, you can look directly um, into the pool. Um, the bedroom uh, is gigantic, or the, the main bedrooms are gigantic. There, there are all sorts of uh, games going on with with exhibitionism and voyeurism there in the design of the house. Uh, it has this extraordinary bathroom on the on the ground floor uh, where every surface is mirrored. A most um, disconcerting <laughs> thing. Um, so there's all kinds of stuff uh, going on there. Uh, and like I say, it, it uh, you know, very often shows up in, in popular culture uh, as a house uh, with um, sexual potential. So, so that chapter, uh, Porno Modernism, uh, was an exploration of these things. And I think one, one of the key things I'd say about it is that these fantasies about this um, peculiar sort of Californian modernism, the, these fantasies uh, often um, exceed anything that the architects were, were really saying. Uh, outright. So um, it, it was important for me to explore uh, the way that these buildings were represented uh, in, in culture. So uh, on to just, just briefly something about this, this more recent project, because I, I think um, Rainer Bannum, although he, he's somebody who, who um, uh, never wrote explicitly uh, about um, sexuality and, and buildings, he, he's certainly interested in these, these uh, questions of, of fantasy. Uh, and uh, he's somebody who's one of the great apologists for Los Angeles as, as a city. And a lot of his interest in that is as a, a city with, with um, uniquely hedonistic possibilities. Uh, so, so just a couple of things. He, he, he loves cars, <laughs> um, uh, but uh, from a, you know, often a, a sort of fantasy um, perspective. So he, in 1955, he writes about this car, um, the Cadillac um, 60 Special. Um, which is uh, a, you know, an extraordinarily um, sexual looking car in terms of its design. Uh, and uh, he, he says something explicitly about that. And at this point he can't drive. So he, he's, his fantasy is, is not just about the form of the car, but it's about the, um, the, the fantasy of driving altogether. Um, Los Angeles, the architecture of four ecologies is, is a book um, which explores the whole city uh, as a set of um, fantasies and so you know, a large chunk of the book is, is about the life of the the, the beach and the, there's there's all kinds of things going on there which we can relate back to that um, the, the earlier um, project sex and buildings um, there, there he is in the film that, that was made of the book in 1972 Rainer Bannum loves Los Angeles there's a huge amount of fantasy going on here um, uh, fantasies are, are not just uh, uh, of um, you know the you know about the about the the, the libidinal nature of the city, but fa fantasies to do with uh, putting himself in a new environment, um, imagining himself in in somewhere uh, somewhere sort of hedonistic and, and different from the the England where he he grew up. And there he is in the the Mojave Desert as a late in life as as a sort of cowboy, but but riding a um, a, a Moulton uh, bike. Um, so these things, anyway, you can explore uh, a bit later on in, in, um, in this book, uh, Rain of Adam Revisited, uh, which uh, will appear in May. So uh, that is pretty much uh, all I've got to say. But I, I think that this was a, it was a fascinating project to try and explore, to try and make these connections 
uh, between sex and buildings. It was very difficult sometimes. <laughs> sometimes you were looking for something that was that was perhaps not there in the the official discourse around buildings, but it was there uh, in the the discourse, the more popular discourses around buildings, in the fantasies that people had projected onto them. Uh, and, and it's a it's a project which uh, you, you can absolutely continue, and I, I would expect to be continued and challenged and uh, turned into something else um, as time goes on. But uh, I'll stop there.